Okay, I think we, uh, we're gonna get started now, uh, just being time, uh, mindful of your time. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, Jocelyn, can you please confirm that you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. And that you can see the screen? Yes. Perfect, thank you very much. So um, I'm uh, Clemos Couture, the Assistant Dean for the Graduate Online and International Programs at McGeorge. And with me today is my colleague, Justin Blinn, who is the Director of our Graduate Online and International Programs. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. And today's uh, webinar is gonna be primarily on uh, LLM admissions. So at McGeorge, as uh, you probably all know, those for, for those of you who are attending, um, we, we have three LLM programs and two JSD programs. So one of our LLM is in transnational business practice and the one in US law and policy and our third one in water and environmental law. Those programs are very different, but the application process is the same for all of them. Um, I'm just gonna quickly go over uh, the requirements for each of our programs before going and addressing questions about uh, the admission process. So our LLM and transnational business practice is 24 units, same as the other LLM programs. It's open to domestic and international students. Um, in this program, uh, you have two required courses. You have a transnational litigation or international business transaction that you must take in addition to our LLM legal research writing and analysis class. Uh, you have an option with this program to uh, do a full-time externship in uh, your second semester, if you wish to do so. Uh, this externship, like I will be working with you to try to find a placement at a law firm, either in the US or internationally, so you can get some uh, practical experience. You also have an option to do a thesis or a directed research. It's directed research is another word for independent studies with one of our professor. Our LLM in US law and policy is uh, similarly um, uh, created in the sense that um, you uh, also have to uh, complete 24 units um, and you also have two required courses. Um, one is the LLM legal research writing and analysis and the other course is one uh, uh, that we consider one of our foundational course. So civil procedure, constitutional law, contracts, criminal law, property or torts. This LLM program is unique in the sense that it is only open to uh, international students or permanent residents. In other words, to, uh, to those of you who have earned your first law degree outside of the United States. Our LLM in water and environmental law my apologies, I just noticed that this slide still refers to the old name. We just changed the name last year. It's Water and Environmental Law. We have, you have the options to do uh, this program in person or 100% online. You can also do a combination of both. This uh, LLM degree is open to both uh, US and international students. It also requires 24 units. Um, but for this degree, there's actually a little bit more required courses. So I'm not gonna go into details on the program requirements at this time, since I wanna spend more time uh, discussing uh, the application process. Um, many of our, all of our faculty who are attached to one of our LLM program, like have either worked in the past in that particular field or currently still work in that field. And I would say that this is, um, uh, accurate for any of the programs at McGeorge. Uh, when we say our faculty are experts in their field, like we, we, we do mean it. Uh, they can, they, this is their area of scholarship. This is sometimes they're hired as consultants. They are hired sometimes as off counsel to law firms. Uh, so our, we view our, our faculty, in addition to the courses that, that we teach, obviously we view our faculty as a wonderful networking uh, opportunities for, for our students. Um, whether you are an international student or not, you will get from our team a very personalized approach. We know all of you come with very different uh, background and also very different goals, career goals, right? Like you're all um, doing the programs, whatever, one of the Ellen programs like for different reasons. And um, we're very much aware of this. Uh, I, we have worked in this field, uh, Justin and I, for uh, more than 15 years. 
I myself, I'm a former LLM student and I've had like uh, uh, different career goals than some of my other uh, colleagues at the time. So we do want to create uh, the, the best curriculum and course uh, of studies for you. We also know that some of you are gonna be interested in taking a bar exam for those of you who are at like uh, former JD students, JD graduates, like we know you're doing the program like for, with different, again, like different career goals. And so we work with you to set up like the best career, uh, course of studies possible, but we also connect you with the faculty that we think you need to speak with throughout your studies at McGeorge. So I'm gonna pass over the next couple slides because like this is the topic of our of today's webinar, right? The application process. And uh, this is when like, I'm gonna open it up like for questions. So feel free to ask us questions uh, via the chat. Um, so I think at this point, I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Jocelyn for her to describe um, what is required, what are the documents required and the best way to uh, start your uh, application for one of our LLM program. Sure, and, th and um, thank you, Dean Kutera, and for everyone um, for joining us. Um, the first thing I wanna say about our application process is similar to the process that we have working with students in the program is we really do approach the application process with, um, with a lot of individualized attention. So my first piece of advice is just to get started on the application because the minute you get started on the application, we are alerted to the fact that you've started and we will follow up um, if we notice that you're missing any, any documents. Um, there, there are two ways that you can apply to um, our LLM program. Um, you can apply through LSAC or you can apply using um, our GradCast application. And there's a link to that on our website. And you're also just welcome to reach out to either, either of us by email and we can, we can send, you, send you a link. Um, we require, um, so, so you submit the application online, whether it's, it's through LSAC or GradCast, and then we require transcripts from, from all of the universities that you've attended. Um, as I'm sure you know, we, we do require a first law degree for admission to the LLM program. So we want to see your first law degree transcript. Um, but if you've, if you've completed a master's program or another um, bachelor's program, um, we, we need to see those as well. For purposes of making an admission decision, you can upload an unofficial copy of your transcript and we will, we will review that and make an initial admissions decision based on it. Um, but then we um, will request that um, before you actually start in the program, before you enroll, that you um, actually have your official transcript sent to us. Or if, if your country only issues one copy of your degree, we just ask that you bring, the, bring that copy for us to view uh, when you arrive. So, so transcripts is one, one item that you'll need. Um, we also ask for a resume or a CV, a curriculum vita. So um, when, when we're looking at applications and we're looking at scholarships, we, we approach everything from a holistic perspective. So we're very interested to know what your, your work experience is like or what leadership activities you've been involved with as a student. Um, so that resume is important. Um, you also write a personal statement. And with that, we're looking for, um, we want to know why you're applying to our LLM program. What, what are your goals? Um, what do you expect to um, obtain um, from the program? Uh, what's your experience that you will, you will bring to the program? Um, and then we ask for a letter of recommendation. You're, you're welcome to submit an additional letter of recommendation, but we only require one. We prefer that the letter of recommendation come from someone who knows of your, your, your um, law related work. So from a professor that you've had um, as part of your, um, your undergraduate law program or from an attorney that you work with um, currently. And then lastly, if you are from a, um, a country where English is not the primary language of instruction, we um, require proof of English language proficiency. So that means um, that you can submit uh, a TOEFL score report, um, an IELTS score report, or um, currently we're even accepting a Duolingo English test. And 
we're looking for a, um, a minimum score of 88 on the TOEFL or a 6.5 on, on the IELTS. And the Duolingo, I believe, is 110. And right now during the pandemic, if it's difficult to get to a testing center, the Duolingo is a, a good option because you can take it very quickly online and get the results very quickly. It's relatively inexpensive. So you might want to take advantage of that um, uh, for, uh, because we're, we're accepting that temporarily right now. Thank you. So just a couple of things that I, that I wanted to add, and I just wanted to stress upon what uh, Jocelyn uh, Blinn just mentioned. Um, we do like to be in touch with our applicants uh, while they are applying uh, for our program. Um, we often uh, have Zoom meetings with them. We, I can only encourage all of you who are attending this webinar, or for those of you who are listening to the recording of this webinar, um, to email us and we will I'll, we'll put our contact information. Our contact information is listed at the end of this PowerPoint. Uh, email us to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting. We very much enjoy that. We enjoy meeting with you, but this is also a great opportunity for us to inform you if we don't think this would be a good fit from the, from the to start with. Um, sometimes like um, uh, um, students have done some prior law studies, but it's not a formal, uh, a formal law degree that they've earned before. So then we would be able to alert to you that the, you would not be eligible to take, um, to apply for the LLM program. But we have other programs that perhaps you would be interested in, like we have an MSL program or MPX programs. So that's why this initial meeting as you're applying is crucial. We also get to know you. So we get to understand a little bit more why you wanna do the program. Uh, sometimes it's not easy for us as uh, when we review application to fully absorb and understand like uh, uh, the, the goal or uh, what is motivating the students and what also they want to do. We, we don't want you to do the program and then be disappointed because you're not, because the program is not opening the door to certain careers that you are expecting. So uh, we, again, I just like want to stress again, like please reach out to us. We enjoy meeting with applicants. Uh, and this is a great way and a great time for you to also ask your individual questions. But I'm gonna pause here for a minute and I wanna let you like the attendees to ask us question about this checklist and about the documents uh, before I, I move along. So just type the question yeah, in the chat box. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions, but before I move, um, I move along. So many of you are probably gonna apply to more than one uh, LLM programs. This is normal, we're very much aware of it. Please, please pay particular attention to um, your, uh, the documents that you submit to each of the law schools and to make sure that it's properly addressed. We routinely have uh, LLM students uploading a personal statement saying that they are, that they dream of going to blah, blah, blah law school, but it's not McGeorge School of Law that they're listing. This often, like, unless we've had prior conversation with you, this often, you know, is a, is a big red flag, lack of attention to details, et cetera. So please pay attention to that. Um, also pay attention to, um, Deadline. So I just let's. I'm going to move on to our next slide. So application deadline. So not every school uh, follows this process, but this uh, this, um, this schedule. So again, pay attention to that. But for McGeorge, uh, for spring 22, the priority deadline is October 30th, and for fall 22, so for August start, uh, the priority deadline is March 30. So for those of you who are uh, um, already in the United States, um, you, uh, if you apply by uh, either dates, like uh, you're well within, uh, you'll, we'll, you'll have plenty of time, we'll have plenty of time to review your application. And it's at that time, right, that we also make uh, a scholarship uh, offer. 
while we're reviewing your application, we make an admissions decision. And if the admission is positive, we also review your application for a scholarship um, offer. If you're an international student living overseas right now and need a student visa um, to come and study, I, again, like, uh, I can only urge you to submit your application as soon as possible. Don't wait uh, the October 30th to submit your application for the spring. You're gonna need to go through um, to submit a, a number of documents in order for us to be able to issue uh, what is called an I-20, which is a document that is gonna help you uh, request a student visa from the US consulate office. Um, so for the time that you gather the documents, it's time by the time you send us the documents, we issue you like, it's probably going to be two or three weeks, like, you know, it's going to pass after obviously our admissions decision has gone out. And then you have to make an, uh, an appointment with the U.S. consulate office, like closest to, your, uh, to where you live. And um, they're busy with the pandemic since I've changed. They, are, they have a limited number of appointments that they offer. We are hoping that this will change. Uh, the uh, U.S. government uh, announced that uh, starting in November, like, uh, the borders will be reopened completely. Uh, we're hoping that also means that U.S. consular offices like around the world are going to go back to their previous um, um, cadence on how often like they issue student visas. But we can tell you that for the last like year and a half, um, uh, some of our students have not been able to uh, start their studies in the term that they wanted because they were not able to secure uh, uh, student uh, visa appointments. Um, Jocelyn, do you have anything to add and any tips for our students? Um, I would I would just add with those priority deadlines, if you if you apply by those priority deadlines, we're very committed to making a quick admission decision once we have a complete application. So if you apply by those priority deadlines, we will issue you um, an admission decision within two weeks of receiving your application. And I say that as an outside time frame. Um, in reality, we often can um, issue those decisions even um, more quickly. So um, I do encourage you to, to, um, uh, to apply by those deadlines. And I think um, very recently, I, I believe um, there was a, a very recent change that um, where it's possible that you may not, um, depending on what country you're from, you may not actually need to go for the visa interview. So the whole process may move much more quickly for you if you act on everything um, quickly, because if you can be one of the first, first people, my, my guess is that more people will start to apply when, once they realize that the, um, the visa process is opening up again or becoming quicker. So I think you want to be at the front end of, of that instead of, um, you know, down, down the line. So that, that's all I would add. Thank you. Uh, so again, I'm going to pause for a minute uh, to see if you have any questions. I submit your question in the chat. Um, the one thing that I uh, I implied uh, in my remarks like just a couple of minutes ago, but I did not uh, stress upon that I think I want to do this uh, at this time is that our office is not only the one who is going to cancel you on throughout your application process. We also uh, we're part of the uh, application review committee. And uh, we are also the one who's gonna work with you directly on your uh, student visa paperwork. Um, unlike some other universities that are, you know, those functions are a little bit more dismantled. Like we've decided at McGeorge to make a one-stop uh, shop for our LM students. Uh, there is often uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot more hurdle for LM students to be able to come to the United States. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible. For our, uh, domestic applicants, um, uh, you will uh, probably find this process a lot smoother, easier uh, than uh, when you apply to, uh, to a JD program. Okay, so seeing no question, I am gonna move on. So, Usually this is a, one of the first questions that we get, rightly so, like the cost. So this is a cost, annual tuition and cost for 21-22. We do not have the information for uh, next year yet. So, but if you were to start your, if you were to submit an application for spring 22, this is like the tuition rate that you would be 
subject to in the spring. Uh, our tuition um, does not necessarily change every year, but it may uh, it may be. Um, it's the our board of regents who approve um, our tuition rate. In addition, you see that there is a student government fee and a wellness center fee that are mandatory. The health insurance is um, it's mandatory for all of our students to have health insurance coverage. There's different ways to get that. Most of our students, our full-time students, do um, get our health insurance from the University of the Pacific. It's um, but if you are um, if you already are in the United States and you have great coverage through uh, your employers or by other means you uh, um, you are able to waive the health insurance uh, fee by showing that you have uh, comparable coverage. Um, we know the cost of doing an LLM program is expensive. I think you you by now, like you probably have done some research of other programs and you probably have seen that actually our tuition is reasonable. I know for those of you who have not studied uh, in the US, you probably find that like um, um, extremely, extremely expensive, which is completely accurate. But we've tried as much as we can to keep our tuition reasonable uh, for our international students because of uh, you know the cost difference for our, GD for our US uh, applicants. It's because we know you've already done a GD program. Um, so, in addition to uh, setting up a reasonable tuition rate, we also have, uh, frankly, like a good number of scholarships uh, for our students, for our LLM students. We have an international program fund, an LLM endowed scholarship. Uh, we have also from a former uh, student, Emil Schnell and Becker Memorial uh, Scholarship, as well as a, as a Dean's Merit Scholarship and a need-based scholarship. You do not need to apply separately to our scholarship as, as uh, when you apply for the uh, program, as far as the application goes, you will, um, uh, a question will be, you will see a question that prompts you to answer yes or no, if you want to be considered for a scholarship. Simply respond, uh, click yes, mark yes, um, and we will consider you for a scholarship when we review your um, application. For our US citizen and permanent resident, you also uh, can uh, request federal loans, uh, and work with our financial aid office. There may be also, also other alternative loans that you may uh, that you may be eligible for. All of the all of this is done through our uh, financial aid office. And if you're interested in learning more about this or in learning how to start your FAFSA uh, uh, um, account, um, what are the codes for the university? All of that. So again, send us an email. We'll put you in touch with our uh, financial aid office. Okay, so I, um, at this point, I don't have uh, anything else. I'm just gonna end on a very successful alumni success stories. Um, this uh, 2009 grad has gone from being general counsel to one of the major like South Asian uh, uh, bank. Uh, she is originally from China, went from China to Indo Indonesia and Japan, and now is in Austria working for Uncitral. So um, I know I just ending on a, on a success stories on a positive note. But uh, so this marks the end of our formal remarks.